Robert Green Bob Ingersoll was a lawyer, a Civil War veteran, political leader, and orator of United States during the Golden Age of Free Thought, noted for his broad range of culture and his defense of agnosticism. He was nicknamed the Great Agnostic. Life and Career Robert Ingersoll was born in Dresden, New York. His father, John Ingersoll, was an abolitionist leaning Congregationalist preacher, whose radical views forced his family to move frequently. For a time, Reverend John Ingersoll filled the pulpit for American revivalist Charles G. Finney while Finney was on a tour of Europe. Upon Finney's return, Reverend Ingersoll remained for a few months as co-pastor associate pastor under Finney. The elder Ingersoll's later pastoral experiences influenced young Robert negatively, however, as the Elmira Telegram described in 1890, 1. Though for many years the most noted of American infidels, Colonel Ingersoll was born and reared in a devoutly Christian household. His father, John Ingersoll, was a Congregationalist minister and a man of mark in his time, a deep thinker, a logical and eloquent speaker broad-minded and generously tolerant of the views of others. The popular impression which credits Ingersoll's infidelity in the main to his father's severe orthodoxy and the austere and gloomy surroundings in which his boyhood was spent is wholly wrong. On the contrary the elder Ingersoll's liberal views were a source of constant trouble between him and his narrow-minded parishioners. They caused him to frequently change his charges, and several times made him the defendant in church trials. His ministerial career was, in fact, substantially brought to a close by a church trial which occurred while he was pastor of the Congregational Church at Madison, Ohio, and at which his third wife appeared as prosecutor. Upon this occasion he was charged with prevarication and unministerial conduct. The evidence at UC de Euro the trial is one of the abiding traditions of the dull little town of Madizona Euro was of the most trivial and ridiculous character but the committee which heard it decided that though he had done nothing inconsistent with his Christian character, he was inconsistent with his ministerial character, and forbade him to preach in the future. Elder John went before the higher church authorities and was permitted to continue his clerical labors. However, he soon removed to Wisconsin, going from there to Illinois, where he died. The Madison trial occurred when young Robert was nine years old, and it was the unjust and bigoted treatment his father received which made him the enemy, first of Calvinism, and later of Christianity in its other forms. In 1853, Bob Ingersoll taught a term of school in Metropolis, Illinois, where he let one of his students, the future Judge Angus M. L. McBain, do the greater part of the teaching, while Latin and history occupied his own attention. At some point prior to his Metropolis position, Ingersoll had also taught school in Mount Vernon, Illinois. Later that year, the family settled in Marion, Illinois, where Robert and his brother Evan Clark Ingersoll were admitted to the bar in 1854. A county historian writing 22 years later noted that local residents considered the Ingersolls as a very intellectual family. But, being abolitionists, and the boys being deists, rendered obnoxious to our people in that respect. While in Marion, he studied law under Judge Willis Allen and served as deputy clerk for John M. Cunningham, Williamson County's county clerk and circuit clerk. In 1855, after Cunningham was named registrar for the Federal Land Office in southeastern Illinois at Shawneetown, Illinois, Ingersoll followed him to the riverfront city along the Ohio River. After a short time there he took the deputy clerk position with John E. Hall, the county clerk and circuit clerk of Gallatin County, and also a son-in-law of John Hart Crenshaw. On November 11, 1856, Ingersoll caught Hall in his arms when the son of a political opponent assassinated his employer in their office. When he moved to Shawneetown, he continued to read law under Judge William G. Bowman who had a large library of both law and the classics. In addition to his job as a clerk, he and his brother opened their law practice under the name E.C. and R.G. Ingersoll. During this time they also had an office in Raleigh, Illinois, then the county seat of neighboring Saline County. As attorneys following the court circuit he often practiced alongside Cunningham's soon-to-be son-in-law, John A. Logan, the state's attorney and political ally to Hall. As the trial of Hall's assassin dominated the scene and with his earlier mentor Cunningham having moved back to Marion following the land office's closing in 1856, 
and Logans moved to Benton, Illinois, after his marriage that fall, Ingersoll and his brother moved to Peoria, Illinois, where they finally settled in 1857. Ingersoll was married, February 13, 1862, to Eva Amelia Parker. They had two daughters. Ingersoll was a great believer in the importance of family life. With the outbreak of the American Civil War, he raised the 11th Regiment Illinois Volunteer Cavalry and took command. The regiment fought in the Battle of Shiloh. Ingersoll was later captured, then released on his promise that he would not fight again, which was common practice early in the war. After the war, he served as Illinois Attorney General. He was a prominent member of the Republican Party and, though he never held an elected position, he was nonetheless an active participant in politics. According to Robert Nisbet, Ingersoll was a staunch conservative Republican. His speech nominating James G. Blaine for the 1876 presidential election was unsuccessful, as Rutherford B. Hayes received the Republican nomination, but the speech itself, known as the Plumed Knight speech, was considered a model of political oratory. His radical views on religion, slavery, woman's suffrage, and other issues of the day effectively prevented him from ever pursuing or holding political offices higher than that of state attorney general. Illinois Republicans tried to pressure him into running for governor on the condition that Ingersoll conceal his agnosticism during the campaign, which he refused to do on the basis that concealing information from the public was immoral. Ingersoll was involved in several prominent trials as an attorney, notably the Star Root Trials, a major political scandal in which his clients were acquitted. He also defended a New Jersey man charged with blasphemy. Although he did not win acquittal, his vigorous defense is considered to have discredited blasphemy laws and few other prosecutions followed. Ingersoll represented the noted con artist, James Rebus, the Baron of Arizona for a time, pronouncing his peril to land grant claim airtight. Ingersoll was most noted as an orator, the most popular of the age, when oratory was public entertainment. He spoke on every subject, from Shakespeare to Reconstruction, but his most popular subjects were agnosticism and the sanctity and refuge of the family. He committed his speeches to memory although they were sometimes more than three hours long. His audiences were said never to be restless. Many of Ingersoll's speeches advocated free thought and humanism, and often poked fun at religious belief. For this the press often attacked him, but neither his views nor the negative press could stop his rising popularity. At the height of Ingersoll's fame, audiences would pay one dollar or more to hear him speak, a giant sum for his day. In a lecture entitled The Great Infidels, he attacked the Christian doctrine of hell, all the meanness, all the revenge, all the selfishness, all the cruelty, all the hatred, all the infamy of which the heart of man is capable, grew blossomed, and bore fruit in this one word a Euro hell. Ingersoll died from congestive heart failure at the age of 65. Soon after his death, his brother-in-law, Clinton P. Farrell, collected copies of Ingersoll a Euro unregistered trademark as speeches for publication. The twelve-volume Dresden editions kept interest in Ingersoll's ideas alive and preserved his speeches for future generations. Ingersoll's ashes are interred in Arlington National Cemetery. In 2005, a popular edition of Ingersoll's work was published by Steerforth Press. Edited by the Pulitzer Prize-winning music critic Tim Page, What's God Got to Do With It? Robert Ingersoll on Free Speech, Honest Talk and the Separation of Church and State brought Ingersoll's thinking to a new audience. Friendship with Walt Whitman, Ingersoll enjoyed a friendship with the poet Walt Whitman, who considered Ingersoll the greatest orator of his time. It should not be surprising that I am drawn to Ingersoll, for he is leaves of grass. He lives, embodies, the individuality, I preach. I see in Bob, Ingersoll the noblest specimen a Euro-American flavor reader Euro-pure out of the soil, spreading, giving, demanding light. The feeling was mutual. Upon Whitman's death in 1892, Ingersoll delivered the eulogy at the poet's funeral. The eulogy was published to great acclaim and is considered a classic panegyric. In popular culture, in his Devil's Dictionary American journalist and writer Ambrose Bierce included his own version of the Decalogue in which the Second Commandment is, no images nor idols make for Robert Ingersoll to break. 
in A.B. Simpson's 1890 book, Holy Sanctified, the prominent New York City pastor and founder of the Christian and Missionary Alliance writes of wanting to read Ingersoll's lectures with a view to answering them, but was so repulsed after reading one page that he dared not go farther. Simpson referred to Ingersoll as this daring blasphemer. In William Faulkner's short story Beyond an Old Man Leaves His Body at the Moment of Death and Visits a Sort of Anti-Purgatory where he encounters the shade of a man who may be Robert Ingersoll. The old man accosts Ingersoll, so you two are reconciled to this place. Ingersoll replies, ah. Reconciled. In Sherwood Anderson's 1920 novel Poor White, Robert Ingersoll came to, a small Midwest town to speak, and after he had gone the question of the divinity of Christ for months occupied the minds of the citizens. In Sinclair Lewis's 1927 novel Elma Gantry, a Burley College student named Elma Gantry who is heavily under the influence of his agnostic friend Jim Lefferts undergoes a seeming miraculous conversion to Baptist Christianity and is immediately invited to speak before an audience. At Lefferts' suggestion, Gantry uses as inspiration for his first sermon a speech by Robert Ingersoll which commences, Love is the only bow on life's dark cloud. Gantry decides not to credit Ingersoll, who would be infamous to his audience, and reflects, Rats. Chances are nobody there tonight has ever read Ingersoll. Again him. Besides I'll kind of change it around. In Lewis Grassic Gibbon's 1932 novel Sunset Song, the character Long Rob is said to be a follower of Ingersoll's work. In Ruth Sawyer's 1936 novel Roller Skates, the central character Lucinda goes to Ingersoll's house on Thanksgiving Day to attend the performance of a play. In James Joyce's Ulysses, an American evangelist proclaims, you can rub shoulders with a Jesus, a Gautama, an Ingersoll. The town of Redwater, Texas, was originally named Ingersoll in honor of Robert Ingersoll when it was founded in the mid-1870s. The current name was adopted after a revival meeting held in the town in 1886. Ingersoll's after visiting the tomb of Napoleon is quoted in Born Yesterday. In P. G. Oudhouse's book The Mating Season, P. C. Dobbs, who happens to be a fervent agnostic atheist, left the county talent show at the local hall early because he didn't like the entertainment and went home to smoke a pipe and read Robert G. Ingersoll. Colonel Bob Mountain in Washington State was named for Robert Ingersoll. His birthplace, known as the Robert Ingersoll Birthplace, or Robert Green Ingersoll Birthplace Museum, was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1988. The following Ingersoll statement is quoted on the inside cover of the Godly and Creme album Consequences, there are in nature neither rewards nor punishments, there are consequences. Ingersoll's brand of agnosticism was labeled Ingersollism by his intellectual contemporaries, including Congregationalist Lyman Abbott, Congregationalist Minister John P. Sanderson, Illinois scholar and lawyer George Reuben Wendling and others. In G. K. Chesterton's short story, the resurrection of Father Brown, Robert Ingersoll, referred to only as Ingersoll, was referenced as an example of the type of atheism cherished by the austere and choleric American reporter, Saul Snaith. For he regarded organized religion with the conventional contempt which can be learned more easily from Ingersoll than from Voltaire. A quote from Robert G. Ingersoll is included in the 2007 documentary by Peter Joseph, Zeitgeist the Movie. The quote Religion can never reform mankind, because religion is slavery. Works, Robert Green Ingersoll.org, The Gods and Other Lectures, Some Mistakes of Moses, Walt Whitman, Colonel Ingersoll's Reply to His Critics in the NY. Evening Telegram. Shakespeare, a lecture, Abraham Lincoln, a lecture, Voltaire, a lecture, Great Speeches of Colonel R. G. Ingersoll. Complete, Why I Am an Agnostic. The works of Robert G. Ingersoll Vols. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. References, Notes. Further reading, Tim Page, editing Robert Green Ingersoll, What's God Got to Do With It? Robert Ingersoll on Free Thought, Honest Talk and the Separation of Church and State, Random House, Trade Paperback. ISBN 1-58642-096-8, Orvin Larson, American Infidel, 
Robert G. Ingersoll A Biography, Citadel Press, Eric T. Brandt, Timothy Larson, The Old Atheism Revisited, Robert G. Ingersoll and the Bible, Journal of the Historical Society, 11, 2, 211 a Euro 238. Susan Jacobi, The Great Agnostic, Robert Ingersoll and American Free Thought, Yale University Press. External links, robertgreeningersoll.org, Complete Works Online, 2, The Ingersoll Times, Works by Robert G. Ingersoll at Project Gutenberg, Works by or about Robert G. Ingersoll at Internet Archive, Works by Robert G. Ingersoll at LibriVox, Voice Recordings at the Library of Congress, Robert Green Ingersoll Museum, Works by Robert G. Ingersoll at the Secular Web, Ingersoll's Biography, Ingersoll Chronology Project, That Tracks His Speaking Career, Ingersoll Memorial Homepage from the Council for Secular Humanism, Large Selection of Quotations, Ingersoll on Sabbath Superstition, Robert Green Ingersoll on Find a Grave, Robert Ingersoll, The Pantagraph.